welcome to the final football edition of A Closer Look. I'm Mark Schein. This is Mark Miller. And Mark, we're just thinking a little bit. The past 10 days, or the 10 days we're in right now, maybe don't get any oh, better than man. this. November 24th, yeah. December 3rd, you got Thanksgiving. Yeah. That's great. Oh, you love that. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ladies basketball gets started in high mm-hmm. school. Mm-hmm. You got the uh, the rivalry in college football. Oh, yeah. Okay. Boys basketball will start this week. Mm-hmm. We got the state semifinals last weekend in mm-hmm. college high school football. State finals coming up this weekend. That's right. Can't get college, college football college playoffs, football playoffs for the lower that, divisions. That's right. Yeah. Starting to figure out a little bit about the NFL, who's going to win those divisions and who's not. It is a great time. It to is. Hockey started. NBA. Yeah. I'm watching the Cavs there only have two losses. You all, got it all. All, all those uh, college championship football games yeah. this weekend. Yep. Be better than that. Well, we have some games to wrap up from the high school semifinal season. First of all, I'm going to start with Macomb. And what a great year that the Panthers had this year. Second year in a row that they are undefeated champions in the BVC. Uh, they're 12 and 2 once again. Lost in the state semifinals the other night to Minster after trailing 21 to nothing. They come back to go ahead 23 21, lose late in the football game. Eight players were first team all BVC. Five of them were all Northwest District first team. A great year for them. Malachi Abbott, Offensive Player of the Year in the district. The co lineman of the year, Mike and Matt Cherry. Another great year for Chris Algie and he's, his team. 16 seniors, 40 and 11 over their high school career. They're going to be missed at Macomb and throughout the BBC, but a great year for the Macomb Panthers. All right, let's take a look forward now. We've got a couple of teams going to the state championship. Coldwater at 13-1. They're going to play Canton Central Catholic at 10-3. This will be for the Division V state championship. This is the third year in a row that these two teams have met in the championship. In 2014, Coldwater won 62-21. Last year, they won 35-18. Canton Central Catholic, they got good skill players and really good team speed. They have a great kicker, and they got a left tackle. Comes from a great gene pool. That is my niece's son, Miller Davies. Coldwater, Dylan Toby had a great game against Coshocton. Ran two touchdowns through two, 331 total yards. Coldwater, six-time state champs. Last four, prior to that, the three years, they were runner-up. This is the 8 p.m. Saturday night game. This will wrap up the state championships as it, is, as it is the last game in Columbus. Then we want to take a look at Division VI for the state championship. Marion Local headed down there again. They're going to play Cuyahoga Heights. Cuyahoga Heights is 14-0. They are the only undefeated team in the state championships. 13-1 for Marion Local. Cuyahoga Heights, is the, this is their first chance uh, to play for a state championship. They beat and shut out Kirtland. Kirtland's a great program. Mm-hmm. They're the team that beat Marion Local last year for the state championship. They beat them twice, once in the regular season, once in the playoffs, and they shut them out both times. So they must be pretty good. They beat Newark Catholic in the semifinals, and Newark Catholic has been to the state uh, semis more than any team in the history. They have a huge fullback, and they kind of revolve around that big old guy. Of course, Marion Local, Nate Moeller, Patrick Henry, uh, game. He rushed for three touchdowns, 215 yards, and Marion Local had 503 total. They are an eight time state champion, four in a row, and a runner up last year. They will play at 10 o'clock on Friday morning. And let's finish up looking at Minster and what they're going to do in the playoffs as they play Warren JFK. What a great win for them last week. Just think about Minster's season. At one point, two and four, they have won eight straight. They will now play Warren JFK, who is 13 and one. That's a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. game. Uh, Jonathan Niemeyer, Isaac Dorston, Jared Hulsman, Bryce Schmiesing, all of them were first team all MAC and also first team Northwest District. Bryce Schmiesing has caught a pass in 42 consecutive high school football games. If he catches one this week for 43, he will tie the record. And I really like what Coach Stokes says about his players, talking about them and the, the, where they were at. And he said, we're making plays, just dudes being dudes. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta like Coach Stokes and how he goes about yeah. doing that. All right, Mark, our plays of the week from high school football. This All week. right, we got three, and we got some replays on them too, so let's let them run through here. This is the uh, Minster Macomb game, and this is Macomb making a throw, and in the flat, Jared Hulsman, number two, picks it off. Look at the run he makes after the pickoff. We'll show it to you in slow motion. Gets into the end zone. That was a huge way as they jumped out to a lead. You can see right there at the very end of the first quarter. That put them at 14 after the PAT, and they got out to that big lead and then held on for the victory. Slow motion, you're going to see Hulsman just kind of laying in the weeds over there, reading the quarterback's eyes, and when the ball goes in the air, he steps in front, picks that thing off, and then you're going to see some really good running after that, and his teammates blocking right there. Good hands, great athlete 
right there, broke a couple of tackles. How he gets out of that, nobody knows. But then down the sideline and into the end zone, that was a huge play, Jared Hulesman. Well, we're going to look at another play, but think back to that play. Isaac Dorston made a block, and that young man played an absolute as good a football game as an offensive defensive lineman could play. All right, this is, uh, again, back Minster and McComb. This is Jonathan Niemeyer catching a touchdown pass in the end zone. And, Mark, you and I have talked about Jonathan Niemeyer mm -hmm. all year long and what great hands he has, his ability to react to the football. We actually get a chance to see this play a couple of times. This one's going to come right at you. There's the pass from Hulesman. And watch how he makes a play on the football. Breaks in front right there of Schrader. And Schrader is a freshman. That young man is going to be quite a football player before his career is over. We'll look at it one more time. Niemeyer the end zone. This will put Minster up 21 to nothing. And, again, they will come back and uh, – Will McComb to go ahead, and then Minster makes a winning play late. Our third play is kind of at the end of the game now. You can see they're approaching three minutes left. The deep throw as McComb's trying to get in the end zone. And number eight, Alex Lemkuhl. Watch this in slow motion. This is a great catch. Of course, he has to go through concussion protocol because his teammate <laughs> just drilled him there in celebration. But watch Lemkuhl. He's got great coverage on the go route, and he has to kind of jump backwards land on his backside after the interception, concentrate the whole way and make that catch in his hands. That's a great interception. That kind of sealed the deal for the Wildcats. And Minster goes on to play in the state finals this week and a chance to win a state championship much as they did back in 2014. Well, over the Thanksgiving weekend, one of the real positive things in our community, uh, the hometown handoff. And Mark, I know you're very involved with that. Give us some rundown on that. Well, a couple of years ago, my son Kyle Miller and Jared Pugsley from Lima Senior got together. They were both in the NFL at the time. And NFL teams do a lot of things around Thanksgiving to provide food and turkeys and meals for local people that need it. And so they decided they wanted to do it in their hometown. So Elida and Lima Senior last year, and this year your school, Bath, yep. joined in. Three schools giving out uh, meals that were prepared by Lock 16, set up and handed out by students. These are students at Elida that we had some pictures of. And uh, the people came and picked them up, and then the basement doctor joined in and gave them non-perishables. Just a really, really nice thought by those two guys early on. A lot of people, Andy Lynch and local business people, have jumped on. And uh, this was a, a very meaningful couple of days before Thanksgiving. Yeah. I know our FCA kids really liked it. Yeah, I know Bath PTS got involved as well with some financial donation, but also mm -hmm. the fact that kids got to pass out those meals. The Bible track went home in most of the meals, yeah. too, so it was a really positive event. And... That wraps up the high school football season, the 2016 football season on a closer look. So, time for the switch. Time for the big switch. There we go. And, and now it's time I, for basketball. I, I, get, huh? I get to play with this <laughs> next week. Right. Yeah. That's right. You all do. right. Hey, all right. So, we're going to look at basketball season now because it's going to start this weekend in earnest with the boys. And Mark Shine, we always like to we look do. at the new coaches in the area. Let's do a rundown and tell yeah, us about it. We're going to look at just a couple of slides here. There are uh, about, uh, what, 18 coaches, I think, in our area, somewhere like that, that are somewhat new. Dre White, brand new. I know Dre played at Bath High School. Going to take over that job after being a ladies coach over at Allen East. Chris Sauter's gone from A to uh, up to Columbus Grove. Kind of interested to see that. And you can see how Ryan Stexel had taken over for the longtime yeah. coach at Kaleida Dick Cordocrats. And obviously a challenge ahead of him as well. Yeah, and he has to go back and play at Columbus Grove this yes. year. Yes, he does. Then moving on to another batch here, you can see some new people. Um, Pandora Gilboa, not a new coach yeah. there. That's Joe Bradick. Joe coached there before, has been over at Bluffton University as an assistant there. He's back in business. And a couple other guys up there, Mark, we've seen before too. That's right. Doug Hughes back at Parkway. And, of course, Nick Fisher, longtime assistant at Coldwater. Glad to see him. And what's missing? No WBL coaches. No, they're all back. All WBL that? coaches are back this year. And, obviously, a nice look there. And we wish them well. We did find out from Jerry Snodgrass that just under 20%, 19.6% of all the boys' high school basketball coaches this year are either first-year coaches or new at their wow. school. So an almost one in five turnover in high school basketball coaches. A lot of change. A lot, a lot of change. change. Yep. All right, another thing we like to look at is every year the committees get together and they discuss and the coaches have some input about what rules need changed or altered to make the game better. So, yep. Mark Shine, let's go over this year's well, rule change. Let's look at the first one, and this one is actually kind of a clarification of a rule. Rule 120, non-playing personnel, cheerleaders and so on, media people like ours, 
are not permitted on the floor during a 30-second timeout. So now when that timeout is called, the cheerleaders are going to have to look at the official, see what the call is. They are not to be on the floor. And likewise, the free throw line extended now, if you think about how that 12-foot wide free throw lane is, it now extends all the way to the wall or to the bleachers, and no one is allowed in that particular area when the ball is in play. That's media, that's cheerleaders, and so on. And then finally, we used to have a minute uh, to replace a, a player who had fouled out of a game or something like that. It went to 30 seconds a few years ago. It's now 15 seconds. And so everybody will know, the official will tell the coach, your player number 10 has five fouls. He will look at the scorer's table. They will give a horn, a 15 seconds will go off, a second horn will go off, and the replaced player must be in the game at that particular time. And then finally, uh, and this is one, uh, coaches, uh, we wish, as officials, we wish coaches would take care of this, and most of them do. Uniform, that's the rule. Uniform means everybody dresses alike, and that's what this is all about. All visible undergarments, undershirts, and, and all those types of things, tights and whatever, wristbands, headbands, all have to be the same color for every team member. They have to be white, black, beige, or the primary color of the team's jersey. In other words, um, if they're wearing a blue jersey, they can have a blue headband or blue wristbands or whatever. And those types of things all now have to be alike. No hems on their shirts can be unfrayed. Everybody's shirts have to be the same length. No long sleeve shirts on some players and short sleeve on the other. Uh, they don't have to wear shirts, but if they do, all undershirts must be exactly alike. And quite honestly, it's a hassle for officials, Mark, because you know, they come out in your warm up jackets, all of a sudden the game's starting to start, and you look at them going, oh boy, now who's right and who's right? It's a little bit and, difficult. And the players like to challenge that. And you the, know, the, the coaches are going to have to take care of that in the locker room, just like baseball coaches have to vi uh, say whether you're uniformed and protected yeah, correctly. A, a few years ago, we had a player come on the floor with bells in his shoelaces. <laughs> so anything you can do to kind of look anything a little for bit Christmas. different. Yeah, there you go. And then one more thing. If you remember last year, we allowed you once again for the six players up on the free throw line to enter the free throw rebounding space as soon as the ball left the shooter's hand. The shooter, however, is not allowed to cross the free throw line until the ball touches the rim or the free throw comes to an end. Well, now if that player who is one of those six players up on the free throw lane goes in to check out the free throw lane shooter, he may not cross the free throw line, in other words, go into the semicircle where the player is at until the ball has touched the rim. That's a violation. If the player would miss the free throw, he gets another attempt. All right. Well, that's some right. things that we can look for this year. Another go. thing we like to look forward to is the players. Who's coming back? Who's going to be good in the area? So, Mark Shine, you've come up with a list well, of players to watch for this I, year. I surveyed. Uh, first of all, we made a list ourselves. Then we came up with some of our announcer buddies here from WOSM. We kind of get a little bit of a list of people from who to look at and who might be where. Uh, we've kind of made a list. How about this list before we go to the one that's on our screen? These are the guys that, you know, were going to be good players, but maybe didn't make our top ten. Jay Kaufman at OG, Daniel Unruh at Elida, Plummy Gardner at Perry, Drew Klein at Crestview, Sean McDonald at Shawnee, Dakota Pritchard at Spencerville, Timothy Krieger at St. John's, Jay Stockwell at Jefferson, Thomas Williams. There's a real good basketball team right there, yeah. and those yeah. guys didn't make our top ten list. But on that top ten list we brought up a moment ago, boy, you can see some really, really good players. Justin Arns, who is a junior, committed to Ohio State, Javen Etzler, Mark, he's a 6'5", a year ago, freshman with a tremendous shooting mm -hmm. touch. Interesting to see how he plays this way. Perry, are they loaded this year? The, the Commodores, regional team, maybe farther this year. Kobe Glover, J Jacoby Lane Harvey, great season for them. Ethan Linder, Anthony Mas Lasco, Brady Wil Wilderuth have all committed to Finley University. J Michael Menendez, you give C Coach Lehman a point guard up at Defiance. Mm -hmm. Man, can they be good. And then Jar Ward, the lone returning player for Lima Senior. A lot of new faces at Lima Senior, and we'll just have to see how they progress, but he'll be the leader of that band this year. All right, there you go. Some guys to look for, and it's going to start this weekend. Let's throw up our broadcast uh, game schedule there. We have lots of games. This is not like football where they're only playing the weekends. We got weeknight games, weekend games, the girls and guys thrown in there. That's the GBB girls games. So take a look at the games and when they're replayed. Mark Shine and I will be at that tip-off classic both Friday and Saturday night. We're pulling a four-game stunt, <laughs> and you might have more than that have, going yeah. on on Saturday, but it's going to be a lot of fun. Basketball, it's time to move inside, getting a little cold and windy out there, although today's nice and warm. It is time to bring on the round ball. All right, we've made the switch. From now on, it's full-time high school basketball as we go through. We're glad you joined us. See you next week on A Closer Look.